On November 17, 1810, Sweden declared war on its ally, the United Kingdom, to begin the Anglo-Swedish War, although no fighting ever took place and there were no casualties. <laughs> Prior to 1810, Britain and Sweden were allies against Napoleonic France. In 1810, however, the situation changed. France and Sweden concluded the Treaty of Paris on January 6, 1810, forcing Sweden to join the Continental System, a trade embargo against Great Britain. Next, after the Swedish Crown Prince Charles August died on May 28, 1810, Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte, a Marshal of France and husband of Napoleon's former fiancée, herself the sister of Napoleon's eldest brother's wife, was elected Crown Prince of Sweden on August 21, 1810. Under these circumstances, on November 13, 1810, Napoleon sent an ultimatum to Sweden's government, demanding that Sweden declare war against Great Britain within five days. This war began on November 17, 1810. Unfortunately for Napoleon, Britain and Sweden never actually fought against each other during the two years of conflict. Indeed, the only thing that could possibly count as bloodshed brought about by the Anglo-Swedish War of 1810-12 to occurred among Swedes. As a precautionary measure in case of Britain attempted an invasion of Sweden, the Swedish government conscripted farmers into military service. When on June 15, 1811, a group of farmers objecting to conscription rioted, as a result, Major General Hampus Morner, with 140 men, killed 30 farmers in an effort to disperse them. As it came to pass, when Napoleon invaded Russia in 1812, a time when it would have really helped to have had as many allies as possible, his relationship with Sweden's government had deteriorated to such an extent that Sweden signed a peace treaty with Britain on the same day that Russia did the same, July 18, 1812. A year later, Napoleon's former marshal and future king of Sweden fought with Russia against Napoleon in the massive Battle of Leipzig. In this decisive defeat for Napoleon, the French emperor's army suffered some 60,000 casualties, nearly half that number dead and wounded, an astonishing number for a single battle when one considers that in over eight years of fighting in Iraq, 2003 to 2011, the United States of America lost 4,487 killed. As a question for my students and subscribers, imagine what it would be like to suffer 60,000 casualties in just one of many battles of a long war. Please let us know in the comment section below this video. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines and become one of our patrons. Your viewership is much appreciated. As a great starting point for learning more about Napoleonic history, I recommend reading the following three books. First, read Napoleon for Dummies by J. David Markham. Second, read Simply Napoleon by J. David Markham and Matthew Zarzechny. And third, read The Age of Napoleon by Susan P. Connor. Collectively, these three books authored by prominent scholars of Napoleonic history provide a great overview of Napoleon and the Napoleonic Wars.